Hello everyone. Today I'm about to embark on installing the very last bolt-on that I can do to my car. And uh, it's obvious that if you want to make any significant power gains with this platform, you're eventually going to have to go run E85. So what I did, I went online and I ordered a E85 flex fuel kit from ZZP. We'll see what all we got in here. We have a stainless steel fuel line. We have a little wiring adapter kit here. Looks like this just splices into the fuse block where you can do the add a fuse feature. A couple crimps, that shouldn't be too bad. We have the flex fuel sensor itself. Hey, get out of there. Well, it's got their logo on it. Okay, got the sensor, and then we got a harness here. And this doesn't look too hard to set up. Looks like we just got two pins, an orange and a uh, pink. And I'm assuming that this hoop is a ground wire. So we'll see where we can mount that up when we get downstairs. And this looks like the mount for the sensor. It's like a nice cut part. We got some tap threads in there. Yeah, it has to be where that goes. And looks like that's the hardware. All right, well, looks like we got some directions in here. I'm gonna put this all back in the box and uh, we'll go downstairs, see if we can start bolting it up. Now we're ready to start breaking down the car. Got a little parts kit here that I kinda amassed. I'm gonna mount up this sensor first because that's the most mechanical part to it and kinda saving the wiring for last. I don't like wiring. <laughs> so uh, I got a fuel line disconnect kit from Harbor Freight. This only cost me about five bucks. Got the directions over here from ZZP and I already took the liberty of taking the, uh, the plastic engine cover off. And the first step is when you pan over to here, you say this is an EVAP line. We gotta take this out of this crimp and then this is a T30 Torx bolt that we're gonna be removing that. Then once that's removed, I'm gonna see if I can get in here to our fuel line. We'll remove that clip and then we'll see if we could use one of these little disconnect tools to break that fuel line apart. Then once that's apart, it's literally just all bolted together. Well, the EVAP line bracket came off relatively easily. I just use a quarter inch drive ratchet with the T30 Torx socket. She came right off. This is what it looks like disassembled from the car. You may have to push in on these little tabs a little bit in order to get the plastic line out. So next what we're going to do, we're going to move over to the fuel line itself. Let's see if we can get in here. And uh, this is the line going into the fuel rail. Let's see if we can back up get you a better picture. And what we need to do is sneak a screwdriver in here. And this is the retention retaining clip. We're just going to pull that off. Ah. And this is the clip. You just pull up on the back and push forward. Let's see if we can orient here, push forward down the line and you'll be able to pull the clip right off. So next, I gotta look and see which one of these little plastic clips is gonna fit on there and we'll break apart the line. So I broke apart the package. Looks like the 3 8 fitting, the pack fits on perfect. And how this works, so there's a split here in the little plastic piece. You just push this onto the line and then you push it underneath the fitting here and what it's gonna do is release the tabs that are inside this barrel to the fuel line for the quick disconnect. And uh, you just keep wiggling it and keep pulling it'll eventually come loose. Now, I tried to do this one-handed, I'm not able to, so I'm gonna have to put you guys down and get this off. <laughs> so releasing the line is very climactic, but uh, you can see where the stop here is, where the line on the inside of here connects to. And there's one of the little tabs that you're compressing whenever that little white clip pushes against the spring and then you're able to pull it out. Um, recommend putting down a rag. Not a lot of gas came out, but uh, it makes a lot of noise of pressure releasing whenever it comes loose. So wanted to get a close up on how this quick connect works. And if you look inside the fuel line here, there's four tiny little tabs. Now if we go back to where it mounts onto the pressure line here, you can see 
there's a little ring. Now what happens is these little spring tabs, they click onto that ring. So how one of these little quick connects works, is you take this and you put it on that line and then whenever you push this in, here it click, it now pushed all those springs together. So that way it can now be removed off the barrel to the fuel line. Well, our next step is we are removing the long bolt from our uh, hardware package and the bracket here. This bolt is going to be the main retention bolt for keeping our hardware together for the primary mount for the new sensor. It's going to bolt right here onto the intake. And I already checked it ahead of time. It is a T30 Torx. So we're just going to get this finger tight. And then I'm going to snack, or uh, get that snugged up with our ratchet here. And they want it oriented up and down like so. And then next we'll be able to grab the sensor and mount that to the bracket. We broke down the other two bolts out of the hardware package. And we have two more here to mount the sensor. And these are T30s as well. I already stuck one in here so I can do this one-handed but the E85 sensor bolts onto the bracket as such. The washer goes on. That goes right over top. Okay, we'll get these snugged on and then all we do need to do now is uh, attach the fuel line and the mechanical part is done. Now we're going to hook up the fuel supply to the 85 sensor because fuel has to go through the sensor in order for it to be able to measure the ethanol content. This is the fuel supply line that's going to go on this line and remember you got to push it on until those tabs go past here to connect onto the little ring. I'm going to have to do that two-handed but how you do it is you just push as hard as you can until you hear a gentle snap and that line's connected. Now we have the stainless steel line that came with the kit, the 90 degree bend is gonna go onto the fuel rail side. I don't know if I'm gonna route the line this way or if I wanna do it around that harness. I think I'm gonna do it this way so that way it's not routing around the harness. And then this part will just connect to the sensor. And then our fuel supply lines will be all done. And this is how it looks like finally all uh, made it up to the new sensor. Now it is a very solid click that you will hear whenever the uh, quick connects do lock on on the fuel line. So give them a little tug whenever you're done to make sure they won't pop off. But if you hear the click, you should be good. Another thing I wanted to notice is this corner here. Do not route it around this. You can see that when it does go onto the fuel line, you have plenty of clearance with this wiring harness issue. Okay, next we're gonna go to the back of the car, disconnect the battery and see if we get the wiring done. We're halfway there. And of course, don't be like me and forget to put the uh, locking, <laughs> a little locking mechanism on your fuel line. There we go. Okay, now that part is done. So, we're gonna take our back cover off here. Look at that, it's like somebody was just in here. Got that off. Oh, and we have a wrench ready with a, what size was this again? Oh, of course, 10 millimeter. What we're gonna do is disconnect the negative terminal here. I hate doing this, because now I lose all my radio stations. Loosen this up. Now we should be able to take that off. And the battery's disconnected. All right, let's get to the front of the car and uh, see if we can tear into the fuse block. Well, this is the part that intimidates even me a little bit, and this is the wiring part. So, went into the directions, they say you need to take off your main fuse block cover and your auxiliary fu fuse block cover. Now, to remove the auxiliary one, there's a tab here, and there is a tab right here on the back. And if you just pull and lift, they come right out. Of course, I did that ahead of time, but... We're going to set that off to the side, 
To take off your main fuse block cover, you got a release tab here, here, and it comes right off. Now we have access to our fuse block. Now I thought this part was actually kind of neat. They say on some of the Camaros, if you can access one of the connectors, you don't have to remove the whole fuse block. But if you need more access, you push in this tab here, pull this up. This is actually a lever. And if you look, you see how whenever you pull up on the lever here, it moves these sliders out. And as that moves out, now you can lift up on the fuse block and the whole thing just comes up out of its mounting uh, part. That is really neat. And now you have access to this, to this whole assembly to where you can get at all the connectors underneath. That is really clever. Well, this is one of those instances where it pays to read the directions ahead of time before you start tearing into stuff. So what I found out, the reason they want you to remove all this fuse block stuff is so you could gain access to the computer underneath. Now, they said in the directions, in the Camaros, if you look down in here, you see those three plugs with the red disconnect clips. Those go to your computer. We want the very top plug. Now, they say if you can access that, which in the Camaro you should be able to, you do not have to take any of this stuff apart. So that is wonderful for me. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my Mishimoto uh, PCV catch can assembly, which I already took out the two 10 millimeter bolts, one there and one right here. And this guy is just going to lift out, give me a little bit more room so I could get at that connector. Being very careful with this Y piece because a lot of people are saying those like to crack with age. In case you're wondering, the Mishimoto catch can kit is fantastic. I've been running this for about three years now and I love it. Okay, we're going to set that off to the side. All right, and now that should give us, oh yeah, access to this clip. And this is where we're actually going to be putting the new pin on. So you take this little red clip, you pull that, and now you're able to push on this and release. I'm going to need two hands to do this, so I'm going to have to put you guys down. All right, so this little clever guy took me a little bit to figure out. Let's see if I can work you guys down in here. So, this is the connector we're working with. So you release, oh boy, that's a great picture. You release this red tab here. And now you take this and you fold this up. There we go. And now this releases that sensor. And now you should be able, or yeah, the harness. And now you should be able to pull her out. All right, once again, two hands. I'll be back. All right, so I had to go to the forums to verify what I was doing. If uh, you ever have any questions, go online to the LTG project that's on uh, Facebook. They are amazing at helping to ask, answer questions. So anyway, this is the front of the connector here. You look on the diagram, this is the front. That's not the back of the wiring harness that I was thinking. So what you look for to help orient yourself, look for pin 73. And you can see the one, two, third block in is what we're looking for. So this is the front of the connector. Here's our big pin down there that we're going to orient ourselves. So that means we're three pins in on the upper back here. So now pin 72 is yellow. Skip a pin for the third pin in, and that's going to be where your pink sensor wire will go in. Once you get that figured out, it's literally just reverse of uh, how you took it apart. It should be all downhill from here. All right, so I was able to wrestle that little pin inside the connector harness, and uh, I had to use one of these little tiny screwdrivers, use it for eyeglasses and stuff, to be able to jam that pin in far enough. If you don't get the pin in far enough, it will not read any ethanol content. So... I got the connector pushed back in place. And now all we need to do is slide this down. Oh, I really wish there wasn't that much sun glare. Uh, there we go. And now, wiring part for the uh, pink wire is done. Now we're gonna get ready to move into the fuse block here. 
All right, now to hook up a power wire. So what we're gonna do here, what they have in the directions is they want us to tap into this F42 fuse. That's right next to the big relay here, and it's a 10 amp fuse. So if we go over to our fuse block, here's the big relay right here. We're gonna yank this fuse here. Now we got a nice little fuse holder. Ugh. All right, so we got that on our fuse. <clears throat> we got the fuse out, and what that's going to do is go into the fa the fuse holder that came with ZZP. We're going to flip him over, and then we're going to jam that 10 amp fuse that we just took out into here. Let's see if I can do it with one hand. I'll be that lucky. Nope. <laughs> okay, so we got the factory 10 amp fuse pushed back into our new fuse holder adapter. We're gonna stick this into that F42 position. <clears throat> like so, make sure it's pushed all the way down. The only thing I did, I modified, I made their wire a little bit longer because where they pushed it through in the directions, it looks like they went through this little side hole. I want to make sure I don't have any rubbing from uh, the lid to the fuse block. So I'm just going to feed this down through and I'm going to solder that together. Now you don't have to solder like I did. You can do crimps, but I always like to have everything I work on soldered. So I'm going to run that wire through the bottom there and when it comes out the bottom of the fuse block, this connector is going to get nipped off and uh, I'm just gonna solder those two together and that part will be done. And then we'll only have one more connection remaining. That'll be the ground wire. Got the fuse block put all back together. I'm gonna tie up a little bit of my extra wire that I got hanging out. I was able to rot it through the bottom of the fuse block so it's not getting pinched by the lid or anything. I took the liberty of taking out this uh, 13 millimeter bolt that goes from the uh, this bracing to the strut tower. We're going to take our ground wire here. This is going to get bolted down here. That's going to be the ground for the sensor. And I'll tighten that up as soon as I'm done. And the last thing. There we go. Installation of E85 is complete. All I need to do is uh, hook up the laptop, see if I'm reading uh, a percentage of ethanol, see if the sensor works, go back and hook up the battery. And uh, if I get any logs, I'll see if I could throw them up on the video. But for now, that's really all that it entails. The hardest part is getting that connector down at the bottom of the fuse block out. But once you're past that, it's very straightforward. So if you have any questions or comments, just let me know. And thanks for watching.